If you talk about anger around Christians for long enough, eventually someone will say that their anger, unlike everybody else's anger, is righteous anger. Righteous anger. What does that even mean? For a lot of us that want to use this phrase righteous anger to excuse our own outrage, we're essentially employing the same self-justifying logic. Jesus got mad once, we say. And we're referring to that moment when Jesus goes into the temple and clears out some of the corrupt businesses that were running in a place that was, well, the place that was supposed to protect and care for the people who were actually on the sharp end of the corruption. Using a scene like this as our defense, what we then tend to do is we look at whatever thing we're currently outraged by and try and draw a line between Jesus's anger and our own. And if we can do that successfully, then we label our anger righteous and unleash our rage. Here's the problem. Much of what's being passed off as righteous anger isn't. Rather, what we're actually doing is using our theological or religious ideas to feel good about what is actually just regular run-of-the-mill outrage. The difficulty is, when we pass off our anger as theologically or religiously motivated, this increases the damage level of our rage because we drag our faith and its reputation down into our outrage. So you may feel better, but you've left a big mess behind you. But if Jesus did get mad, then that must mean anger isn't always bad, right? So how do we know if our outrage is righteous anger? Well, a simple answer would be that for anger to be righteous, it has to be, well, it has to be righteous. So Christians have, might have moments in their lives where their anger lines up with something that God might be angry about. But could you spot that? In an excellent book on outrage, Ed Stetzer points out three characteristics that might help us assess whether our anger has something of a godly root to it. So here's three questions you might want to ask that will help you analyze that. Number one, is what you're angry about something that angers God too? Now, there's quite a few things that anger God in in the Bible, Uh, but if you look closely, you'll see they often fall in a different category than the things that anger us. God rarely seems to be angry at what we would get angry about. What raises his temperature, so to speak, is when the things that people say and do are used to sort of oppress the poor, or encourage injustice, or immorality, or corruption, or people are led astray. That seems to be what makes God mad. Another question is, does your anger look like God's anger? When God is angry, what's fascinating is how he processes it. Instead of simply raging, what we see is a God who acts primarily out of his unending love and surprising grace. It's easy to be angry, but can you process your anger through a lens of love, grace, and forgiveness? That might need some practice. Finally, you might want to ask whether your anger leaves God in control. You might feel right in your anger. You might even be right in your anger. But here's a question. Are you trying to extract revenge and punishment? Are you positioning yourself as the judge of the situation? See, often what happens is we don't like how God in his love and grace and patience is dealing with things that we are angry about. So we head off to social media to take control of the situation. But if you've promoted yourself to chief deliverer of vengeance, you can be pretty sure your anger isn't righteous. So here's the thing. Most of the time when we say that what we're engaging in is righteous anger, really it's just a lie. And a lie that we're telling to ourselves. So rather than just adding a label to your anger to justify it, here's a suggestion from that ancient letter James in the New Testament. In chapter 1 and verse 19 he says this, Brothers and sisters, get this straight. Every person should be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Human anger, you see, doesn't produce God's justice. And that, I would suggest, is still some of the best advice out there on this subject. We'll catch you again this weekend for part two of our series, Age of Rage.